Hey guys, Muso here. We're going to talk about projectile motion. What the heck is projectile motion, right? Well, you know, projectile motion is a fancy way of saying free fall, but in two dimensions, okay? So it's two dimensional free fall. Remember, the definition for free fall is an object solely under the influence of gravity, so we remove all other accelerations or forces, which I know we haven't learned in detail yet, but you probably get the idea. Uh, so projectile motion is an object traveling in two dimensions, but the only force acting on it is still gravity. So instead of it being a ball that we drop and see how far it falls, it's an object that's going to travel both uh, forward and up and down. Okay, and I'll sketch a better path of that. So that's the definition. In reality, of course, in real life, we do have air resistance, so we will have to consider that. But when we're setting up our physics in this class we are going to ignore the effects of air resistance, at least in terms of quantifying it. We will understand its effect conceptually, okay? So there are two core types of projectile motion that we're going to be talking about. We've got more or less what's called horizontal projectile motion, and that's an object that's initially released with only horizontal velocity. You see how that vector, which I'll represent as V, is to the right? Horizontal projectile motion uh, is still influenced by gravity, of course, but it starts off with no y velocity. It's only got x velocity, and it'll still travel in a projectile path, like so. And the other uh, type is um, angled projectile motion. I guess is the best term for it. I don't know. Uh, an angled projectile motion is one in which the ball or the object has velocity in both dimensions originally, both the vertical and the horizontal, so it would be some velocity at some angle, hence angled projectile motion, and that um, you know goes up and then comes back down, or whatever. And like in that sense, now you know, as is the case with all physics problems, they can get a little bit more hairy than this. And um, so you know, this this series of videos is going to just go through the basics. Uh, this uh, video is going to focus on horizontal only. And then the next video will focus on angled. I'm going to go through, work out some examples, talk about some concepts to do with both, and um, yeah, just wrap it up that way. Okay, so let's do this. Let me get rid of this guy and let's focus on just this guy. Also, uh, another thing to understand is the path in which the projected travels, even with the angled, is always referred to as a parabolic path, and that makes sense. It looks like a parabola, right? So yeah, don't don't you know, don't overthink it. It's a parabolic path. That's it. Okay, so I don't know. Let's see, let's talk about some concept first. So a projectile that's traveling under the influence of gravity and only under the influence of gravity. It's going to be traveling in two dimensions. We're going to have that horizontal dimension and we're going to have that vertical dimension. And remember from when we talked about vectors, you always have to separate your dimensions when you do your physics. You can't combine your x and y variables or your vertical, your horizontal and your verticals. You have to keep them apart. It's painstakingly clear in projectile motion because... The acceleration due to gravity only affects one dimension. You're not going to have the acceleration due to gravity pulling it forward. You're going to have it pulling it down. So the first concept is that the acceleration due to gravity only affects the y or the vertical dimension. Hence, you always have to make sure you separate your x from your y or your horizontal from your vertical, however you want to think about it. Okay. Second, your horizontal component will never change. So if I know my horizontal component right from the start is 2 meters per second, as an example, then it's going to stay 2 meters per second the whole way uh, across while it's moving. The only velocity that will truly affect it, uh, that will be truly changing, is um, the vertical, because acceleration due to gravity is pulling it down, or, or slowing it down. It's still pulling it down, but slowing it down as it's traveling up and increasing speed as it travels back down. Okay? Now, of course, when we consider air resistance, it will affect both dimensions, so that's going to be a little different. Again, we don't have to quantify that. We just need to do that conceptually, and I'll draw uh, that example, una momento. Okay? Another thing I just want to talk about before I get too far ahead into an example problem is it's really, really good to organize your values. Like I've said multiple times, you have to separate your x's from the y, so you might as well make an x, y table when you do that separation so we, can, uh, so we don't forget that, right? Okay? Um, let's talk about air resistance, and then I'm going to give an example about uh, two tandem objects, one falling and one projecting. So here's my object. This is where it lands if I do not have air resistance. And my question to you is, if I include air resistance, if I have air in the way, and this particle is still shot with the same initial velocity, how will it affect the way it lands? 
Now, what we're looking for is for you to understand that that velocity vector, which is horizontal, will experience some resistance. So it will actually, in this example, including air resistance, it will actually slow down, so it won't land as far away. All we're looking for when you ask these style questions, I'll do this one in purple so you can see the difference. All we're looking for when we ask these style questions is for you to conceptually understand that it'll still follow a parabolic path, but it'll just end closer. And that's because it's slowing down the horizontal sense. Do not do what I'm about to do. Do not do what I'm about to do. I see students try to get all funky with these things and get all weird. They're like, oh, it goes up and it just does something like this. And no, we're not looking for anything like that, okay? This isn't a paper airplane catching the wind. This is just a regular old uh, projectile. Don't go and say it goes further away. Resistance means it impedes the motion. So it's not going to make it go further out. Air resistance is going to slow its effect down. It's not wind boosting it. It's air getting in its way. Okay? That's it. Concept for air resistance is over. So the other one I want to ask you is, and this is a classic example, and I'm going to go ahead and use the bullet and shell scenario. Uh, Mythbusters actually did an episode on this. I encourage you to check out their bullet and shell episode. It's pretty gnarly. Uh, and the question is, let's say we have a gun. And remember, I fail physics art, physics art, so I'm not very good at taking the time to draw my stuff. But pretend this is my gun here, and it's going to shoot a bullet out of it. Oh, that is a terrible gun. Oh, well. And inside here is a bullet and it's going to fire it out, okay? And the question goes, let's say we're some distance above the ground. When you fire a bullet, pretend, eh, it's a pretty terrible horizontal line, so I'll try to get a little bit better. Uh, pretend that this is a nice perfect scenario where the bullet, the gun, is all perfectly horizontal, and uh, this bullet will eject the shell cartridge completely down. It won't shoot up and at an angle away from you. It's just going to drop the shell, as the bullet shoots forward. And the question goes, uh, what will hit the ground first? What will hit the ground first? Will it be the bullet as it shoots through the air? Will that hit the ground first? Or will it be the shell as it falls down? Which one hits the ground first? Think about it. Will it be the bullet or the shell? Some questions you might be asking. Well, what's their mass? Well, let's debunk that. Remember in free fall, mass has no effect. So it will be, they will be falling uh, as a result of the acceleration due to gravity in the same capacity. Their mass has no effect there. Okay. Now, pause it if you're not ready to answer because I'm about to give the answer. Here's what I hear a lot of students say. A lot of folks. A lot of folks will say the bullet will hit the ground first. They're going to say, well, because it's traveling super fast through the air, it's going to cruise towards the ground faster. Okay. The majority of people will say the other way around, though. They're going to say that that bullet is going to hit the ground significantly later than the shell. They're going to say that shell hits the ground, that bullet is still cruising through the air because it's going so fast. So their, their suggestion is that because it's going at such a high speed that it will take longer to hit the ground. That's a logic example or a logic thought. I mean, a lot of people think it, but I'm telling you both of those are completely wrong. It is the third option. Uh, kind of a trick question. They will indeed both hit the ground at the same time. I know it doesn't seem very obvious, and you've probably never actually shot and paid attention to this, so you never shot a gun and pay attention when the bullet and the shell hit. So I can change the same example, which I'm about to do, uh, with something rolling off a cliff or something falling from the same height. So keep this in mind, and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to try to mathematically show you why in a minute. But uh, they will hit at the same time. Why is that? Let's go through and give an example that you might have actually experienced in real life. Uh, let's say, well, I don't know. You and a friend are off swimming, and there's like a diving platform. Of course, this is water down here. We got a nice calm pool of water. And uh, you guys get all silly, and your friend leaps off, not up at an angle, but just shoots out. They, you know, come back in, they run out, and they shoot out at an angle, horizontally, away from the edge. And then you, you just kind of felt like just doing kind of a pencil dive, and you just dropped straight down. So you had no initial horizontal velocity or vertical velocity, just fall. 
and uh, your friend has a starting horizontal velocity, but no initial vertical velocity. And the question is, which one of you hit the water first? And we already know the answer. I just told you. Uh, objects traveling at the same initial horizontal uh, or vertical height undergoing the same initial vertical speeds will indeed hit the ground at the same time. And I asked you earlier, well, why is that? What's the reason for it? And it's simply because of this. Gravity, G, only affects, it's that E versus A bit, oh well, only affects vertical motion. Or the Y values. Therefore, whilst we are traveling horizontally, gravity is not increasing or decreasing that horizontal speed. It's going to pull you down the same as it pulls everything else down. Add to that, X motion, so that horizontal motion, has nothing to do with vertical motion or Y motion. They do not interact with each other at all. So that extra horizontal, that speed, has nothing to do with the ability to fall. And if it did, it would be pretty gnarly. That would basically be implying that as this person runs out, gravity basically slows down or even stops to exist at all. So they're just like out here. I totally see them picture. They're like, Ooh, they're out here running. Wee! And then they realize that in the air maybe. And then phew, fall down. You know, you got that Looney Tune effect. No, that's not happening. And I'm going to try to kind of draw it for you. I'm not going to concrete put numbers in right now. Uh, what we've got going on here is this blue guy, uh, as he's a little bit further uh, on, he has fallen a little bit. But that horizontal speed, it hasn't changed. This is V, this is V. Is there any uh, VX, we'll say? Is there any reason for that VX to have changed? No. But not only does he have some VX, but he also has some VY, right? And then this uh, pink guy, which I clearly didn't draw this guy too far out, he's only fallen a little ways as well. Same distance he's fallen. Uh, and he now also has some VY. And he has the same VY as this guy does because they both fell from the same height with the same initial velocity. And if I were to draw at a sizable time later, this guy would be uh, cruising down here. His VY would increase by a lot because gravity's still acting on him. And then uh, this dude over here, He's going to have that same downward speed, but he's now moved over a distance. So he's he's still out over here. Uh, he's still cruising off with the same VX, but now his VY is increased, just like this guy. And they're going to keep doing this until they, they splash into the water. This guy is traveling in that parabolic path, and this one's just straight down. Excuse that. My computer just blasted a beep at me. I don't know if you heard that. All right, so maybe I should toss some numbers in here now. Again, G only affects the Y, and X only affects the X. The Y only affects the Y. Do not marry these two together. Horizontal projectile motion. And that's the same thing for vertical, by the way. Vertical projectile motion, the G only forget, uh, affects the Y. And the X's and Y's do not go together. Hmm, let's do this. I'm going to end this video here. This is the basics of projectile motion. I'm going to do another video dealing with just horizontal, and then another video, video with just angled. The horizontal one, I'm going to incorporate the breakdown of the vertical motion within it so you can kind of see this example with numbers. Cool. Thank you.